Hey everybody and welcome back to Dash Studio. In this video I'm going to, this is not going to be a particularly long video, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a character icon to this screen. Essentially this is the main character's bedroom in the scene and there's quite a lot of stuff going on in here which I've forgotten to pack away so I'm just going to pop those in there and then close that down and now I can fly my mouse around and not catch on anything. Essentially what I want to do is render uh, a couple of buttons for the character being in this scene so that when you hover over them you have the ability to click on them and potentially further the storyline or not dependent on what actions you take. So this is the scene itself, fairly simple. If I were to jump into NVIDIA IRA mode it would have a bit of a think and then start rendering it in as you can see it's a it's a it's a room it has got an artificial light in it because there's not enough light coming in through the window to illuminate the entire room that's not a problem so we've got that up there so i need to render a character into this scene so i'm just going to quickly pause the recording and load a character in the scene and then i'll see you in a second Alrighty, so here she is got her in the scene i'm going to just drag her into a position so that can see her she's got deforce hair got some nice sandal and stuff you've seen the character before at this point I'm just going to put her into a pose. I'm going to have her doing something in the room that's just kind of banal that really doesn't take a great deal of time and effort. Then I'm going to just apply a couple of um, animations to her and then just going to render it out. So that's really all I've got to do. The first thing I've got to do is pick the position in the initial pose. I, I like the idea of having her kind of hanging out over here looking at the clothes on there because that's the kind of thing that a mum would probably do in her son's bedroom. So we're just going to swing her around this way. Drag her over there. Like so. Then I'm just going to find a good pose for her. So bear with. Let's give her a good pose. Standing pose by function. Standing. Here we've got available to use something fairly kind of simple she's not going to be doing the problem with it this is this is a problem that um i talk about a lot on my channel and that is that a lot of the content that you get on the daz store is actually very sexualized and that's a problem because if you're trying to render people doing things that are not sexy it's generally quite difficult to find the pose even the sort of standing poses they're always posing like they would if they were posing for a camera in a glamour shoot or something like that. They've got their hips massively popped out to one side, their arm draped over their head, or they're resting their hand on their boob or something like that. So finding fairly kind of boring poses is actually can actually be quite a challenge. So it's really just a case of finding the ones that are the least sexualized really. Um, so yeah, that's not, I'm talking for a long time because I'm trying to find a pose that doesn't look sexy. It's it's not easy. It's not easy. I just reckon that probably something like this would do. Let's find out how she looks in this pose. Give it a moment to load. Something fairly simple. She's just standing looking. I'm going to give her a bit more of a rotate like that. And she'll be chilling out over there. So now I'm going to bring up my timeline. And this is going to be a 16 frames per second over 32 frames animation. So we need to just go there, change our frames to, per second to 16. And I'm going to change the total number of frames to 32. And you can see our timeline changes. And the beauty of doing it this way is that I can actually adjust the speed in my code for RemPy if I want it to go a little bit slower. And I've got a bit of wiggle room because you can get away with going down to about eight frames per second before the human brain stops perceiving that animation to be motion and starts perceiving it to just be images that are changing so yeah you know you can go as far as eight if you're really strapped for memory i wouldn't recommend it but you know it's up to you so we're going to go into our animate time frame now there we go so i can open up my smart content and go with animations and if I just type in the one I want like that that will spring the one I want and then I double click on it a couple of times to fill up my timeline with it and now you'll see her breathing 
and that's all she's going to do. We don't want her to be doing anything particularly exciting because she's facing away from the camera. We just need her to really be moving slightly to give the player the illusion that she's alive. Now this is obviously Deforce hair, so we need to do a simulation, but because she's not prancing and dancing around the place, there's no point doing an animation for every frame. So I'm just going to change the start bones from Memorized Post to off, and I'm going to just simulate the current frame, and I'm just going to hit simulate. It will have a bit of a think for a moment, give it a few moments, as you can see it's just going to whip through that and just bring her hair down to a slightly more natural looking kind of resting place. It will take a minute. Here we are, just finishing up that simulation now, the hair's really not moving that much, it's just draping down the sides of her head. Give that a sec, boom, right that's done. So now we are basically ready to quickly do an Nvidia iRate check, just want to make sure that this doesn't look complete ass. it has happened before. Stick in Nvidia iRate mode, just let it quickly run this for a few seconds just so we can check that she's lit okay and it's not just going to be a horrible grainy mess and if it is then we can make some adjustments to how we render out these frames. She's lit okay, looks good. You can tell that by the fact that there's light on the back of her shoulders and head. But we'll go back into texture shaded mode and now we're going to come into our render setting. So I'll bring that window across for you guys to see. And uh, I've got to dock that now, haven't I? Silly boy. Have a dock pane group. There we go. Right, back to where we were. Don't want to dock you. Thank you very much. Bring that back down. Close that. Don't know why the tips window's open. So what we're going to do is go into our render settings and we're going to go to general. We're going to change this to image series. First thing we need to do, check that that says 0 and 31. And I'm going to just set this to my bedroom. That's the name of the room and the name of the character. Change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. It saves us having to change those afterwards. Next thing we can do is go to progressive rendering. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to set our max samples to about 500 and I'm going to set the max time to slightly higher just in case. Once it gets to 500 it'll change. In fact I'm going to go 550 just because I've got a good feeling about that number. Looking good. Now we're going to go into our filtering and we're going to turn on our posty noiser. Turn on our posty noiser enable. And then we're going to change the start iteration to, I'm going to say 525. So that means that realistically only the last screen dump is going to be the noise. The rest of it will be perfectly fine. That's cool. So now we've got those bits set up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into advanced and I'm going to change this to a canvas render. Change the canvases, add a beauty one. Now I need to create a node list. And I'll just call this mom like that. Beautiful. Now I'm going to go into my three dots here and I'm just going to drag it straight down to the bottom. I'm just going to select her. I'm going to expand and I'm going to just select. She doesn't, eyelashes aren't really important on account of the fact she's facing away from the camera. Same with eyebrows. We do want the hair. So I'm going to make sure I select both of the nodes and that. We don't need the anatomical hair. Earrings, maybe just in case you can see them in the render. We obviously need the shirt, necklace doesn't matter, we need shorts and we need shoes. We're going to hit accept. Now we can select this, mum, hit alpha there. Boom, that is good to go. So we can go back to our editor and now I can hit the render settings and that will basically output the frames I need. If you're interested in seeing how to turn this into a film strip for animation in Rempar, you can check out the video I released a few days ago, which covers that topic quite nicely. I'm just going to do this and you won't see the end result because the end result will just be a film strip image. But thanks ever so much for watching this guys. Hope you found that interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. But until then you take damn good care of yourselves. All right. Bye bye.